Welcome back to Journal Sunshine. I am excited to show you something today that was requested by one of my viewers. Jade wanted to know, what do I do with my finished notebooks once I fill them up? For these traveler's notebooks in particular, I wanted to make sure that I could easily find them and flip through them, so I didn't want to store them in a way that kept them far away. I use my traveler's notebooks to document the best days, the coolest things that I do, or things that I want to remember, and that means trips I go on, events I go to, happy things that happen in my life, sometimes sad things that I want to make sure I remember as well, but as a result, these aren't the kind of notebooks that I want to just maybe put in an airtight water sealable bin and just put them in my basement. So now I'm going to show you the system that I use to archive my traveler's notebooks and depending on the kinds of journals that you use and what you put in them you may want to adjust this for something that works for you but I figure this way you can have some inspiration and get your ideas flowing if you're not sure what to do with your journals when you fill them up. Traveler's Company makes these binders in both the regular size and the passport size that are specifically <laughs> suited to fit their notebook refills. I was already using the Traveler's Company notebooks and I love how modular they are and how customizable because you can take these notebooks and move them around and use multiple and pull them out when you're done with them and so it just made sense to have somewhere to put them when I take them out of the cover when they're all done. I also use a couple of accessories that I consistently have been using across all of them. That way I can label them and they look nice. And so the first thing that I use is a label maker. This is made by Dymo and I use their black refill tape in this. It's pretty easy to use and I like the cohesive look of it when I use it on all of my notebooks. And the other thing that I use is this self-inking date stamp. I love the look of these. It can get a little messy and sometimes I mess them up, but what can you do? So the notebook that I recently filled up is in this Chic Sparrow cover at the moment. It's the Yaffe leather, which is retired, and this is the narrow size. I love this thing. I have a setup video if you want to check that out, but I went ahead and found the refill that I filled up, and they get pretty thick when I <laughs> finish them because I end up pasting lots of stuff on the pages, lots of collages, lots of photos. It's really colorful and really fun. And you can see that there is the first date that I started writing in this notebook. And so I'm going to stamp the last date, the date of the last entry that I put into this notebook, just so you can see the start and the finish. And if you've seen my most recent journal with me video, you know that I forgot to switch the date from 2021 to 2022 for that later one and so after I filmed this I ended up going in with a marker and putting in a two over that one and I'm going in with the Zebra Sarasa gel pen it's in the vintage camel color and writing the word through just you know because it looks nice and then if I'm looking for a particular notebook later, I'll be able to see what the dates were that I wrote in this one. The next step is to take this notebook out of here. So the first thing I do is remove the bookmarks because I have two of them in there. That bookmark and the charms are from Bam Kuhen and that's one of my favorite things. <laughs> I love that store. And so then I just have to find the center of the notebook and then remove it carefully from the elastic. That elastic tends to get stuck on the pages, and so extra careful when I do that for sure. Now I know that this refill ended up being pretty thick, so I just wanted to test and see if it would even fit in this binder and what that would look like, and uh, it's a no-go for sure. <laughs> Definitely too many notebooks, and that's fine because I have another backup binder that I haven't started filling up yet. What I did have is another notebook that is thinner that I think I'm going to put in this binder before I close it out. And so this is one that I was using as just a travel journal for a long time, but I found that having it separate from kind of my everyday adventures made it difficult to keep up with. I am a little bit bummed about it, but I'm not going to dwell on it for too long just because I have figured out my system. This was a step in me figuring out the best way to do these traveler's notebooks. And you can see here that I've actually been numbering the volumes using that label maker and I just, I debated with myself about how to do the number system. I count just the regular traveler's notebooks. I don't think I'm going to count this weird unfinished one. <laughs> but then the numbers start over for the passport size, which I debated about for a good long while. 
After testing to make sure that this craft paper notebook fits, I am going to attach it to the binding on this binder. And this binding is really kind of unique. I don't know if I've seen another binder quite like this, but there are these little metal bars and I'll show you a closer look at them a bit later. And this, for future reference, is not the best way <laughs> to go about this. I did figure out a better way to do it that I'll show you in a second, but it's actually to detach the metal bar put the notebook in there, make sure that the metal bar is lined up, and then poke the metal bar back into the little top section after the notebook is already in there. This is more difficult to do when you have a lot of notebooks in the binder already, but yeah, <laughs> I figured it out. So now that this binder is full, I'm going to finish the label on the spine. And I've already made a label that says 2017, which is the first year that I started writing in the first notebook that's in there. And so I'm going to create another label for the last date in the notebook that is in there in the back. And I'm going to use my label maker for this. Now, admittedly, I don't use this label maker super often, so every time I pick it up and it's been a while, I kind of forget how it works. And so I did struggle a little bit the first time that I made a label on this, a little bit on the second time as well, you'll see. But I will be an old pro by the third time that I make a label in this video, don't you worry. And once that's all finished, I peel off the backing and I stick it right there. And I left a little bit of space between the two years because the next step that I'm gonna do is actually grabbing a felt tip marker. This is, it's a fine liner, but it's a pretty thick fine liner. And I wrote two. So it says 2017 to 2019. I really like the way that looks. I was a little bit worried that I would ruin it, but I did not. Now I get to pull out the fresh binder that I have had aside for a little while and it's actually still wrapped by Baumkuchen because they're amazing and they, they wrapped it so beautifully all by itself and so I just left it like this on my shelf until I was able to finish enough Traveler's Notebooks to be able to open it. So here you can see what the original packaging looks like from Traveler's Company. You can see it's the number 11 refill and I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. On the front of the packaging, it does say that it can hold up to five notebooks, but that's only if you don't really add that many things to your pages. If you're just writing in it, yeah, you can fit five. And that's what the little metal wires look like that hold the books in there. And now I'm gonna make the label for the spine on the new binder. And so just double checking that it is 2019. And one thing that I do have to kind of remind myself when I use this is to squeeze hard enough on the little handle to make sure that this works. So you can see I have to put a lot of effort into pulling it out of there because I didn't squeeze tight enough on the step where the label maker cuts it at the end. But it's okay, we figured it out. And I grabbed the other binder and lined them up just so that I can make them look somewhat uniform because the hope is that over time I'll have a bunch of these binders all lined up on my shelf and it'll look really cool. And in case you were wondering, this is the Kelly Creates number 10 fine liner that I'm using to write the word two. And I'm planning to leave the other year open because I don't know when I'm going to actually finish enough notebooks to fill this binder. Now I'm going to number the volume on my finished traveler's notebook and I thought about writing like VOL for volume and hold on just one second, I just want to show you the way that I have learned on the third try that I don't actually have to pull the label out, I just have to squeeze the handle tight enough. Anyway, instead of writing volume, I just put some dashes and spaces on either side of the number and I feel like that looks nice and simple and it works for me. I also learned when it came to attaching the book to the binder that it makes a lot more sense to remove the little metal wire. Really easy, you just have to bend it and pull it out. It's not attached in really any other way. Flip to the middle of the notebook and place that wire right in the center and then I attach it at the bottom and then I just lightly bend that wire and attach it up at the top. And it works out pretty well. It's a little bit fiddly, but you get used to it. And then you have space for more notebooks, unless you add a lot of stuff to the pages and there's just room for one. <laughs> I personally find this very satisfying. I may end up decorating these binders a bit more, but I really like the simple look of them. You can see that they have varied the stamp on the back over the years. The one on the left is older. And like I mentioned earlier, they make them for the passport size, which I think is ridiculously cute. And here is what they look like on my shelf so far. I would love to hear in the comments below, how do you store, archive, and display your finished notebooks and journals? I do have some notebooks in other sizes and brands 
and I could definitely use some ideas for those. Hope you're having a good day and I'll see you next time.